You need to know this before playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. This video will have you ready for action, so make sure to listen to everything carefully. I'll discuss these topics which are stealth mechanics, victims abilities, the family abilities, the meta game which is essentially your skill tree, and how it all works. Please refer to the chapters in this video to help guide you to the right sections. This game is a 3v4 multiplayer experience in the asymmetrical horror genre, so you will be encountering other players as they try to hunt you down if you're playing the victim, or vice versa. And the goal of stealth does play a vital role in prolonging these engagements so you're able to have the chance to escape from these encounters and survive. And some of these self mechanics do fall into sections of sound or noise that is actually occurring in the game through certain actions that the victims can do. And by doing so, if there's too much sound that occurs in that one match, Grandpa will wake up from the family side and that will cause buffs for the family against the victims, making the victims reach their demise even quicker. So your goal as victims is usually to prevent this from occurring at all costs and trying to prolong this as long as possible. That's how you have the advantage as victims, but also by not creating any noise, you don't give your location off to the family. So the family members can actually see the sound that you produce through sound indicators through their own gameplay, trying to hunt you down even quicker. So by prolonging this, you will most likely survive early engagements, escape the basement, and go to the next phase of the mid-game to late game with ease. Another part of stealth is the lighting effects in the game. In majority of the maps, there are lighting locations where you can turn off a lamp, turn it on. Depending on how you play, you can use this to your advantage. And as a victim player, if you want to play really stealth-like, you would make sure that all these lamps are turned off and left in darkness. So when you're playing as the victim, you can hide yourself in the darkness, so then the family members won't be able to see you as they roam around the basement, or even the higher levels if they're indoors. That is a great way to stay in the shadows by turning off all the lights in the map and use that to your advantage, so hopefully you can get out even quicker without taking a single hit. Now we've been talking about the victims quite a lot, so let's talk about what the victims can do through their abilities. Connie's your speedrun character, she's able to unlock doors really quickly and also not consume an unlock tool at the same time. So there's some debuffs to it, but she's just so good at doing that. Then we have Sunny, which has got Hide and Sense. Anything around him, he can sense and actually see the locations of the enemies and their movements, so that's really nice. But he has to delegate that information through voice comms to his team members so they also know what's going on and provide that communication that is necessary for survival. Then we have the new character, Julie, and she has Ultimate Escape. This will provide her a boost of pretty much movement as she's able to pretty much run for longer but also not be tracked by the family as well. So that's really good. So she's running around the map trying to get stuff done for your team. She's really good at that. And she'll be able to escape with ease. And now we have Leland, aka the Chadland of the game. He's a lifesaver. He will shoulder bash into any family member, stunning them and allowing them the time necessary to escape from the encounter. This would be really great if your team member is about to die and before they get into the execution scene, you pretty much shoulder bash that family member and provide that spacing that's necessary for your team member to survive and for you to survive as well being a protector in the team. And then we have Anna, which is also a very great character. She's pretty much your tank. She's able to take high reduced damage for a set duration, and that will allow her to take an additional four hits and pretty much survive encounters easily. And now let's talk about the family abilities. The cook has the ability to seek. Similar to Sunny's ability, he's able to pretty much track down enemies that are moving, and if they're not moving, he can't track them down. Simple as that, but that information is so vital when the victims are trying to get stuff done, and the cook can provide that information to his team, and then Bubba and also Hitchhiker, or even the new killers in the family, can actually go there and say hi to them and see the demise of another victim. That is the goal with the cook, providing that communication that is necessary. Then we have a new character being Sissy, an original character in the game, and she has a poison ability which is able to apply that to victims or their items around the map as well. To what degree that this will play, most likely it could be a dot damage ability, so damage over time, and also containing items making them less relevant or not being able to be interacted with at that current time. So we'll find out how this works at day one. And then we have the Hitchhiker, the Trapper. He's able to put a couple of traps of bone traps around the map and utilize that to his advantage, catching a victim and then trying to chase down that victim and get that easy kill. It will take a bit of time for victims to escape this, so that's always such a good thing to utilize to stop easy escapes from occurring. And they have Johnny, another new member in the game, and he has the hunt ability, able to pretty much stalk his enemies by tracking their footsteps and finding their locations as well. And then you have Leatherface, which uses his chainsaw and do some crazy damage out of it. And Leatherface is a unique class and playstyle in this game and it's quite a entertaining one as well if you get really good at it. And the general play styles of these characters, the cook is quite slow and methodical with his understanding. The hitchhiker is a slippery character, is able to traverse pretty much all over the map as well and get to any type of crawl space and just chase down victims. Low damage, but he's able to chase them anywhere. And Sissy seems to have the same play style as him as well, so that'd be quite interesting. And then from there we have Johnny, which has a similar play style to maybe the cook through his slow mobility, but 
providing information that is necessary to his team. And Leatherface is a very neat class as well, able to be very destructive with his kit and destroy crawl spaces, barricades, and doors, making pretty much movement not that often accessible to the victims. And let's discuss how the metagame works, aka the skill trees they can utilize in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What it will begin with is that you select a member, being a family or victim. Each member will come with its own character ability as the core ability, then various perks and attributes as well. You can save these into five custom loadouts and pretty much change your playstyle as you go to make things more interesting and dynamic with each match to match experience. And it looks like abilities will be the most vital aspect of pretty much providing that uniqueness to your character through their roles, their strengths and their weaknesses. And a good thing to know is that Grandpa has his own abilities too. So when they reach a certain stage by feeding Grandpa blood from the victims or blood around the map, he'll be able to raise his power level and actually increase his own abilities and usage in the game itself. Let's discuss perks. Your perks can have three total perks perks in total within each loadout. Perks will be gained through his skill tree as well, and based on the key attributes of the character you've chosen, your perks would usually line up with that as well. And this will allow for creativity within your actual loadouts, and one of those perks could be the idea of increasing stamina in hiding spots or shadows, or after not being hurt, recovering stamina. So certain perks will play in certain ranges depending on what it falls into in your attributes. And some perks of interest for victims are, Rally leader, when you rally the team by helping other victims, you and your team will recover from being incapacitated faster. And there's perks for the family, and one of them being tracker tagged, hitting a victim will highlight them for all family members. So that will change the dynamic of how information is provided to your team, and also how you can escape in certain scenarios with the victims. And you'll garner attributes as well, which will hopefully help within your attributes, being toughness, endurance, strength, proficiency and stealth. Toughness will provide you survivability. Endurance will increase your stamina regeneration rate. Strength can alter the effect of stunning effect durations, such as stink attacks, grappling in close counters, bursting out of hiding spots. It helps with that characteristic. Proficiency will help with interactions, such as lockpicking. And stealth will help with interactions and making them more silent than normal. So not changing the initial style mechanics that we mentioned in the start of this video, just enhancing it. And how you level up and earn XP is a vital part of pretty much increasing any of the capabilities in your skill trees for attributes, your core ability, and your perks. And by gaining the XP, you'll fall into certain situations, which is winning a close encounter, turning the generator on, escaping slash dismantling traps, healing your teammates. That's the way you gain XP, and the more that you play, the more stronger your character will be. Each character reaches a certain level of 10 to be completed, and it seems like this can go two ways, which is your character level will obviously progress the more you play that selected character. Whatever points you gain from your play level can be then placed into your skill tree of a selected character that you want to upgrade making that character reach level 10 even quicker. And then we have the ability skill tree, which is highlighted on screen right now. There seems to be a couple of components, but you usually want to go through a format of going left to right or right to left, be able to get all the synergies of all the benefits that you gain from each node, instead of going from one node to from the bottom to the very top, because it seems like it may not be stackable. And the benefit you gain from that vertically isn't as drastic as getting the benefits from each node. And in the skill tree, it seems like that you won't be able to go through a full skill tree, from one run, and you won't know what the ending of that skill tree will be until you complete it. Some of those abilities will be hidden in that skill tree, so you have to actually go through that skill tree to progress, and then through that progression, you have choices to choose one strand or the other, and that will obviously create your character's build in a different way than going from the left strand or the right strand. So you have to choose which one in order to get those better benefits for your character, and this will change depending on what build you want to have on your character. But there also is a respect function in the game, so it looks like we can actually respect and obviously use those points once again in the other direction if you wanted to do so. Make more builds for your characters. And there'll also be grandpa ability nodes which you can unlock on the way, and some random nodes as well. And depending on how you use your skill tree, if you want to build your character in toughness, then you would usually build that way. But if you want to level up endurance instead, your toughness may deplete and then endurance will be the only option. And respecting can happen at any time too. So that seems like all the functions that you need to know when jumping to Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Game this Friday, aka today. So make sure to enjoy this. As you know now, the family abilities and how they work the victims and their abilities and how fundamental that can be, and the metagame of how to progress in this game to reach that level 10 capacity on each of your characters and using the skill tree, the core abilities, the attributes, and the perks in conjunction in order to make the build of your choosing to have fun in this game. And that will be something that we'll be doing quite a lot on our live stream, so make sure to check that out. They'll be out very, very soon, as soon after this video most likely, or whenever the game is out the first minute I'll be streaming, so make sure to check that out as well. We have links down below, but that is going to be streaming on YouTube and also on Twitch, so make sure to visit that. Tell me your thoughts about this. If you want to see more Texas Chainsaw Massacre on the channel, I'd love to know in the comment section down below. Thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure and make sure to check out this other video right here for more content.